Hello everyone and welcome back to Automation Empire and to Dapper Dunes and our very, very pretty, though possibly not as efficient, truck loading bay. Ah, efficiency. Efficiency is going to take a back seat because that is just too, too glorious looking to replace. Now then, down here, I'm having a bit of a think on uh, ways that we can improve this system. Obviously, in the last episode, we unlocked the claw track, and I think that's already made uh, a good a little bit of uh, a difference here. I am probably not going to migrate towards one large refining area for all of the coal and all of the iron. I actually kind of like having um, distinct little uh, refining outposts for the miners, um, especially in cases where we've got just a, a couple of miners here and there. Uh, we end up transporting quite a lot of uh, a lot of material and probably hit some issues with expandability on the factories, depending on how many different mining nodes you all bring into one place. Right now, three refiners for three mining rigs works perfectly well because they mine at exactly the same speed that the refiners refine. Even if we were to increase these by introducing water, so enabling fracking, they're only going to increase their output by a third, which across three would almost, but not quite, um, justify a whole other refiner. But that's the most that we'd ever need to fit into this space, and this space is more than enough to handle that. But shall we go ahead and just make sure? I think we should. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and just expand this little area just a tad. I think we'll uh, draw this down like so, and we will expand this out a little bit. Uh, we're going to have to move some of these things around. I know we're going to lose out on a full wagon's worth of refined coal there. It's not the best, truly, but uh, it's also not the worst. All right, let's go ahead and pump this one down here. Actually, that will end up looking quite nice, in my opinion. I am probably, hmm. Now this does pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, I guess what we could do is we could expand this out since uh, there is a potential for this wagon to need to pick up a lot more than this wagon is dropping off. Though I'm a little bit dubious that two wagons is quite enough, two carts that is, is quite enough to gather all of the material there. So I'm gonna pop down an extra two there and that should allow us to gather all that we want. In fact, I can quickly check. Yes, it's backing up there. So these these wagons are not quite a, a enough to grab all of the material there. So uh, adding the uh, extra bit there should make a wee bit of a difference. We might even get away with uh, shortening this. We'll have to experiment with that one though. That'll definitely be a trial by error sort of affair. All right, there we go. And we should be able to hook all of this up like so. Uh, actually, another thing we could do is instead of using the one connector there, we can easily fit this even further along. And then we have definitely got enough room. So at that point, I can put that back without too much worry. There we go. That should uh, be nice and compact. There we are. Make sure that's oriented the, uh, the right way. We then want to drag these out. And again, we only need to account for four. There will never be more uh, output from these three mines than four refineries can take. So that's all we need to account for. And so this is gonna give us just that little extra bit of, uh, of um, expandability, of scalability in the future. There we go. And we are going to, well, actually we're gonna need this one to offload somewhere over here, which actually we can easily uh, create by doing something like this. And then, uh, actually, yeah, that that looks quite nice. I've got to be honest, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this one's going to look. There we go. I, I think it's uh, going to end up being quite functional as well as pretty. Uh, we are going to need to get rid of you, though, because you're a corner section. There we are. And we want the loader over here to hoover up all of the refined coal. And then it just comes down to expanding out our claw track. Now, thank you very much for the advice in the comments. I wasn't aware that these could be clicked on to uh, much the same way as our um, claw uh, balancer for the step conveyors, the transfer claw, can be told to skip um, every other crate or so on and so forth. You can do exactly the same thing with the claw tracks. Uh, I think the reason why I might have missed that is that 
If you click here uh, or around here, you may end up, or at least sometimes it happens, that you might end up clicking on the track itself as we have done there, rather than the unloader. And I probably did that once or twice and then quite happily signed off on the, on the idea that you could never get the uh, unloaders to work the same way as the uh, claw transfers, which was a bit silly of me, I know, but oh well. All right, there we go. We want to load that up. Oh, that is unfortunately pointing the wrong way. Let me fix that. There we are. And then we want an offloader as well. There we go, perfect. And down here, probably want to extend this. Um, well, we could extend it. Uh, is there particularly any reason to, um, well, yes, and indeed no. Um, I would like them to pick up from the end of the belt where possible. It is going to mean that this track's a little bit longer than necessary, but I don't think that's really going to be uh, too much of a problem for us. And we can happily allow all five of those spots to be loaded. We're never going to need that. In fact, we'll probably, well, I guess we could actually add, uh, add five claws on there. But we're really only going to need four over here. We'll, we'll leave it at five, though, just for the symmetry's sake. And there we go. I think that should be a much better system. That is going the wrong way, though, so you need to rotate. There we are. Perfect. And that one is going the right way. There we go. Offloading all of the, uh, well, some of the loaded crates. Unfortunately, we don't have all of them. Uh, we are starting to unload this, though, so that's uh, going to add a little bit of extra efficiency for us. And with the four, we will completely tap the output of these mines. This will never be um, filling up, but occasionally, um, should they have, uh, or, or for in this example where we have got a bit of a backlog, this will help um, work down the backlog, so eventually this will be uh, be empty at all times. And that's just, just something I, I like to see. I don't like seeing a backlog of materials. That just means you're not doing enough with the materials you've got. There we are. How much is in there? One more. There we are. We are going to be going through some of the empty crates, unfortunately, but that's that's fine for now. There's not a lot that we can do about that one, unfortunately. We are going to be uh, losing some of them. There we go. Just top that up. And things are looking good. Right. Before we go any further, I will go ahead and cause these to skip just so that we have some level of syn uh, synchronicity between the refiners. But that's probably surplus demand, really. But there we are. We've just uh, improved the efficiency a little bit. We've still got a little bit of room there. But honestly, if we really, really wanted to, you could shave off a whole um, uh, column or row, depending on the orientation, and fit this in a little bit closer. And it would still work. I'm just not sure that it would work well. I, I think having that little bit of extra space is not really hurting us. I don't believe the factory itself costs any power. I think only the uh, the machines inside. Now, here's something I need to check. Are we do? Oh, we do still have tax. Okay, that's good. I started the series with tax, but since then, the developers have actually taken on board the feedback from the community and have added an option to remove tax entirely, or at least to greatly reduce uh, tax. I am i haven't played around with it enough to uh, confirm whether it's complete removal or not, because the tax is still listed. So I would have thought that if, uh, if you had a mode where tax was completely nulled, you wouldn't have a readout for tax. So it could just be that the tax amount has been reduced. But you can select that when you're starting your map. Um, if you want the taxes, because you want that extra bit of challenge, it is in fact called challenge mode. So uh, there you go. So for those of you who were very concerned about the, the taxes in the game uh, impacting your fun, you can now uh, get the uh, game rolling without that. Now, I need to go around and replace all of my uh, mechanics uh, or, or, or the uh, the loading mechanisms in these areas to use the claw trains. I think it's going to improve efficiency possibly. If, regardless, though, it just looks good. So I will bring it back when I've done that in uh, the next three factories. Okay, we're going to have to come back before I've managed to finish off all of the work. It takes me a little bit of time to uh, work out what's going to be the most efficient uh, setup, or at least the, the one that'll fit without uh, me needing to completely re redesign the factory. But as you can see, I've managed to get one of the iron mines and one of the coal mines upgraded as well. But we are kind of hovering towards uh, a bit of a, a tax 
issue right now. If you have a look at my current outgoings, my taxes are 105,000, whereas my power is only 36,000, which isn't exactly the best. Uh, it doesn't leave us with very much money to play with. Uh, as a result, I think we need to drastically increase the amount that we're able to shift out in any three month period or, or any period at all. And that really is going to come down to gaining access to the claw track uh, truck loader. Now, we are only shy of a little bit of hitting this goal. And I think the best way to do it, as much as it pains me, the idea of investing any of my uh, hard-earned research into drones, is either increasing the speed uh, by which the drones can load my trucks, if that one could get over there a little bit faster, for example, this one could have already left, uh, alternatively, changing the priorities here, so the drones will literally just uh, load whatever in whatever order, rather than giving uh, very low priority to the, the most distant ones. Uh, alternatively, getting even more drones, but I don't think more drones is really going to fix my problem here. I might have more drones in the air at any one time with a crate ready to go to the first place where they can drop it off, and maybe that would be enough. But we might end up finding that I need to invest a little bit in drone speed. Let's see if we can't fix the problem, though by adding one more drone bay because ultimately that would allow me to then just delete that drone bay when the time comes without uh, without really having wasted any of my hard-earned when uh, my hard-earned is slowly being eaten away by tax. I, I don't really want to throw any of it away needlessly. Uh, we've already invested in the trucks and the trucks are got, probably going to be here until the late game, the very, very late game. And even then, we may keep some uh, truck depots around. Maybe this will be all we'll use for trucks because as soon as we can move on to trains, they're going to be significantly more efficient. Uh, we'll drop that one down there because they can carry so much compared to trucks that uh, realistically you're not going to really go for trucks if you can use trains instead. But adding four more drones seems to have pushed us over the point where we're now getting uh, these trucks loaded as fast as we possibly can. Now, I would like to change up the way that we're actually loading these trucks as well. I would prefer to have my research just kind of on a chain going through here with a couple of resource tanks moving down in this direction. I'll have all of the, the processed coal loader on one side, all of the processed iron loaded on the other. Though, realistically, we'll probably be moving away from iron and coal as soon as we can. We've already hit the necessary amount there. Is there any more need for iron and coal? I actually don't think there is. So realistically setting up uh, two separate load off areas for the iron and the coal um, respectively, probably unnecessary because we're gonna to wanna to start moving on to uh, uh, combining these as soon as we can uh, since the uh, steel plates are worth so much more. Uh, currently, we're sitting at 2,700 or coming up to 2,800. We're going to probably have to let the, the game run for a little bit, which is a bit worrying because taxes are climbing. Uh, now, the way that taxes work, the developer has gone to the effort of posting on Reddit just to kind of clear things up. You shouldn't be capable of going into the negatives using tax. Uh, the, the way it seems to function is it'll always bring you back to effectively your starting currency, but that would ne necessitate deleting everything you've ever built. I'm not sure how that would work with research, though, and that's why I'm a little bit dubious about uh, investing that there. But as your your revenue starts to drop, so too will the tax. And it'll, it'll tend towards a sort of equilibrium where you're not earning anything anymore because you haven't expanded your, your earnings and, and gradually the taxes will creep up to what you're earning. So you are on a bit of a timer. And I think that, uh, that was why a lot of people had the feedback that they would prefer to remove tax from the game in its entirety. Uh, right, let's have a look. Is that trending upwards? Uh, it's slowly getting there. I'm going to let time pass a little bit, and we're going to see if we can crest that 4,000 amount, because if we can, then that is going to allow us to move to a significantly more efficient uh, means of loading these trucks. And because we'll be able to ship more, we'll be bringing in a little bit more profit and it'll push us just a little bit ahead of the tax curve. But we'll see where this balances out at. Oh, it looks like we might just pull ahead. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, time to collect all of this glorious research and then just plow through both of these. If we're able, yes, we are. Oh, that is marvelous. 
Okay then, let's show how claw trucks are going to improve our loading. I'm going to keep the drones around for now, uh, but uh, as soon as we've got this set up properly, we're going to be moving ahead. Now, the way that uh, the claw tracks work is if we have a look at the claw train, we've now got the claw train truck loader. It costs 7,000. It's built onto a road pit stop, commands passing claws to drop off their currently held crate onto the track, uh, onto the truck underneath. Uh, I think we're going to have them set up something like this. We can't place one there, unfortunately, because of a drone, or perhaps it's because, oh, well, no, there's another tr uh, truck currently there, so I'm not quite sure why that is. Either way, we are going to have separate uh, belts for loading them, uh, something probably uh, along these lines, I'm thinking. We'll bring this down. We don't really need to go the whole way down here realistically, but possibly we might want to load things on the other side. So let's uh, set that up with the mind to that working. Now, obviously, this is going to pull down the efficiency of this little track just a little bit, but uh, building for the future. There we are. And oh, no, there we go. And then all the way back down again. It is a little bit finicky trying to uh, see where these are placing on the ground below. Now, the idea here is that we want each one of these to draw from a, a couple of loaders just at the bottom here. Now, how are we going to get that to happen? You might be asking yourself, especially since we've got these um, being uh, run down in this direction. We can't place any uh, step conveyors outside of a factory. So that's not an option for us. So instead, what we're likely going to do, and uh, I suspect it will be the best way, though it is expensive, is we would have unload stations. Uh, for the time being, we'll just have these two set up for it. Um, find the sort of central point we want, somewhere around there. We'll have unload stations running this length like so, and much the same way over here, something like that. And then we would have load stations here, 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 and here. There we go. We're going to create a little loop of uh, another claw train loop, just grabbing everything and dropping it off here as fast as it possibly can. So we're, this is going to be a fairly long claw train loop. Uh, we want it to, to grab as much cargo as it can at any particular time. There we are, and probably want one there, one here. We'll see if that's a little bit faster to build like that. There we go. And then we want this loop to come down and around and run over these locations. All the way down, we pretty much wanted to pick up from every single uh, location it can, though I'm only going to grab the ones at the ends of the, of the rows. Uh, I don't think there's much reason to uh, to try and grab from every single tile, because the moment you pick one up and the crates are in motion, the claw train can't lift it up from that point. Uh, but where they are intersecting, I will put a loader at every single one. There we go. And then we want four unloaders, like so. And then we simply have something on this side. Oh, I actually extended that out a little bit too far, didn't I? My bad. Uh, we'll have all four, it doesn't really matter. There we go but I will remove these just because they're going to get in the way. And we'll uh, observe this system in action. Now, I do need to let it finish. Uh, I need to get a little bit of cash in the bank before I can really set this going, but uh, we can start placing a few down now. So let's go with... Um, we'll just add a couple to help out with these uh, trucks for now. And then we want a lot down here, pretty much as many as we can get. We want this to just keep going. Now, the drones are going to very quickly find that there's nothing for them to load. And that is perfectly fine by me. All right, there we go. That's 12 uh, claw trains, as many as we can have. Now, we could, over here, set it up so it'll try to load balance, if we particularly want to. And I see no reason not to. There we go, grabbing up all of the iron, and it's going to mix them up. Now, these are not accessible to the drones in any way. And, in fact, at this point... I could, in, I could just straight up turn these two pit stops off for the drones. So they're not going to care about these at all. It's purely going to be loaded via the, the claw trains. Now, ideally, you want six on each line if the line is only servicing one truck. If it's servicing more than one truck, then you want as many um, claws, uh, six times the amount of trucks that it's going to be servicing effectively so that each train can carry a full 
trucks load of resources. There we go. And then we want to add some over here as well. There we are. Perfect. Now, these trucks should ideally get completely loaded every time they stop by the claw train. And that means they're just going to be uh, setting off straight away. Now, uh, obviously, our drones are getting in the way a little bit, but that's fine for now. Uh, what we could have is this traveling across. Well, actually, no, I would need to have the load position here to have uh, this travel across and unload on that side if I really wanted to. I don't particularly. Uh, as it is right now, I could have a different loop just running around uh, on that side as well so that uh, we've got even more loading potential. So we would have 24 claws loading potential at any time. As you can see, they are doing a fairly good job of moving these materials. In fact, we're starting to see this one um, emptying out. Though that is very interesting. That uh, why is this full of iron suddenly? Uh, that means our coal. Oh, <laughs> well, that would explain it. I didn't finish off setting this one up. Uh, what a derp I am. Let's get uh, three over there. Well, actually, we'll go all four. There we go. That happened because, unfortunately, I ran out of money. And uh, I was a little bit more concerned about keeping track of how much time had been in the episode than uh, whether my factory was running. I know, not exactly uh, my smartest move, but there we are. Let's uh, get that rolling. There we go. That should see uh, coal starting to filter through and uh, starting to fill up the uh, boxes over here. Though there isn't quite enough room for that final car. That's a bit of a shame. I'll remove one there. It's not going to be running at um, peak efficiency there, but it doesn't really need to. Right, there we go. So that's uh, actually doing quite well at the moment. We're, we're over producing here. I think we're safe to remove the drones at this point. Now, whether this removes the drones cleanly and we get back all of the money, yeah, it does look like we do. Fantastic. In that case, I'm going to get rid of quite a lot of them. Oh, that uh, wasn't quite what I wanted, but there we are. There we go. Perfect. Right, so now it is all down to the claw train. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up a loop that is going to deliver enough materials to all of the trucks. And I shall bring you back in just a moment. And there we go. This took me <laughs> quite a lot longer than I expected to be able to get down because of taxes constantly setting me back. As you can see, uh, our shipping has reached 4,500 uh, uh, 4, kilograms. Uh, our monthly tax and power combined are quite high and are starting to uh, significantly impact my ability to build anything right now. But that was largely because of the uh, rather expensive way that I'm using to move uh, these crates around. Now, this is uh, definitely worth uh, covering. Each one of these costs 2,500. It is not an inexpensive way of delivering these goods to their, their desired locations. And uh, of course, each uh, claw train, or rather each claw on the train, uh, is rather expensive as well. So uh, that has been a little bit of a setback. So uh, going into this, you do need quite a lot of capital in order to make it work in any kind of uh, realistic time frame. But once it is up and running, as you can see, it is uh, delivering quite a lot of uh, of goods rather quickly at any particular time there's at least one load of cargo or rather usually i mean over here it's a little less uh, 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 guaranteed as it is down here but we can see that this train has got enough for one full load this uh, there is a, a full load's worth of claws on this one and that's true of all of them this one is the exception because it's trying to deliver to two trucks and only has six claws on it so it's only really able to deliver one truck's worth to this line so it really doesn't matter how much we've got they they're not going to quite be able to uh to keep up for the time being there we go now these are probably going to be able to uh lift up the goods here faster than the goods are being stockpiled which isn't exactly uh what we wanted to see but uh, it'll do for now, I suppose. Uh, ideally, what we want is to have this as a purely a loading bay and just have everything loading over here and then all of these claws picking up where they can. Uh, we also need to extend this all the way down so that we've got a fully functioning route for our cargo. It's going to be an expensive one to do, unfortunately, but it does look like we finally crested that point where the, the we've 
started to uh, ship fast enough that we're just keeping that little bit ahead of the taxes. There we go. Let's have a, a look over here. Yeah, we've moved up to 200,000. That's marvelous to see. Uh, we are probably not going to see more than 4.5 kilos being shifted, though. And that is a little bit of, of a pain because we do need to see 6,000 being shifted for us to be able to move on to the combiner. And that is really going to open up the game for us. Now, there are small efficiencies that we could, uh, we could purchase by redesigning this to use claw tracks but again that is going to require assets that i don't really have to offer just yet so what we may need to do is instead hook up the mines down here and again it's going to require a little bit of, of assets but initially just have it uh, piped all the way down here and then have another uh claw train just delivering some to each of these locations just so that if there isn't enough refined materials they can at least use the unrefined materials to to make a little bit of extra extra money but what i'm seeing here is honestly we can significantly increase the the output here this is perpetually full at this point we are producing the coal faster than we can ship it so an extra couple of these would not go amiss uh, that would cost us quite a lot to set up initially uh, we could do something like this, pop that one down there, and have coal running all the way along. That might be worth us doing, honestly. Uh, I may actually save up to, to do that. Uh, right now, we are delivering coal from two separate um, areas, and ultimately, I would like the coal from over here to be delivered there as well. So that would make sense. Perhaps uh, we would need to expand this out a little bit more in order to be able to shift that much product but it would be well worth our time to do that in fact yeah it looks like we're we're just creeping up so i may as well go ahead and do that because i'm not noticing that all of these trucks are being loaded as fast as we want that said again we could go ahead use up all of that research and bring in more trucks because i'm noticing that these two are actually just hanging out with nothing to do, nothing to load. So uh, let's go ahead and invest quite a lot. Yeah, sure, we'll uh, push this all the way up. We'll have trucks coming through here as fast as they possibly can. Now, whether our claw trains are gonna be able to meet that demand, very unlikely, at least until we set up some more um, crate makers over here. So let's get down to that, shall we? I think we should. Let's go ahead and pop this one right there. We don't need to worry too much. We just need to look, uh, balance the amount of resources here. Then at least one of them can be set up fairly inexpensively. Uh, let's go ahead, pop you down. Now, of course, yeah, taxes were just about to come out. It's like, I've had too much money for far too long. I've gotten the, the gist of these taxes now, and uh, I pretty much constantly expect only to have about 15k. If I've got more than that for any period of time, then I'm due uh, a uh, tax bill. But there we see the trucks are moving quite nicely. We are shifting a lot of cargo now, and that will in turn help with the taxes because the taxes are um, not going to be able to quite catch up as fast as we're increasing our shipping right now. Uh, it, it increases by about 2% every month, so eventually it will catch up. We're currently operating at about 50k ahead of our taxes, which is quite nice. We can turn all of these off. They're no longer needed for um, interaction with drones, so there's no reason to have them set up for it. There we go, and this one can just go down there, and we can add in another station to lift cargo. There we go, and uh, much the same down here as well. Right, I'm going to want to pause this there for a moment, and quickly go about deleting this. Now, oh, I caught, I caught the claws as well. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, I wasn't paying enough attention there. Now, the reason why I suggest pausing it is, uh, certainly if you're in a position like me, where taxes are a bit of an issue. Uh, if you don't pause it, yes, you've just deleted it, and yes, the game does quite happily refund the full cost of buying, of, uh, of having made a thing. However, that isn't to say that the taxes won't steal all of your money mid-build, and then suddenly you don't have enough to put everything back the way it should be. There we go. That should now be able to handle the demand of these two trucks. Uh, whether it... Well, in theory, if the trucks uh, continue to pour out as fast as we've set that up, then maybe not, but we'll see how it goes. 
There we go, that is actually going quite nicely. And they're picking up from the back rather than the front now, which is uh, a little bit better. There we go, and they're dropping all of that off. You typically don't need as many unload stations unless claw, um, sorry, uh, step conveyors are involved because they're so much slower at taking the product off the load station. But honestly, this is fine there. Uh, we do need to rotate this around now, though, otherwise it's going to only give priority to this lane, which is not exactly what we want. We want them to try and balance it a little bit. And it, on that note, all of these have been uh, set up with that in mind, so that they are balancing to some degree. There we go. So we're shifting a fair bit extra now. We can go ahead and add a few more as well. Uh, let's go... Well, do we need it? That's the question. No, uh, I don't think we do. We seem to be uh, grabbing this material pretty quickly as is. There we go. Yeah, these should actually have uh, stocked back up before we can do it again. Now, what we could do... Um, I may be able to fit in another claw track over there just to uh, pull this product out. But uh, this seems to be running quite nicely at the moment. Quite nicely indeed. We don't seem to be stockpiling except for the iron, but that's to be expected, honestly, uh, at this stage. We're not pulling this out very quickly at all. But there we are. The, the iron actually isn't getting much attention overall, uh, so we probably do want to change that up a little bit. We might even be able to afford some more um, trucks at this stage. We're up to 4.8 that's actually not bad because we've still got uh, one quarter of the month yet to go. Now, again, what we want to get to is 6,000. And once we can hit 6,000, then we can unlock the combiner. And we're going to be demolishing most of this. <laughs> well, actually, no. This is one of the reasons why I like having the refining done kind of on site and then shipped out. We will probably be building a steel factory over on this side. And then that can filter... Uh, out onto this side over here. We will probably still have like overflow for the coal and iron, though generally speaking, I would like to build the steel factory um, with a sufficient capacity that it can process all of the available um, coal and iron because it just makes more sense for us to be shipping that as steel than shipping uh, these leftovers. If we do have overflow, then I should increase capacity. We haven't quite managed to get to the full five, uh, sorry, full 6,000. But we may find that in the next month we can do it. We're going to take a bit of a drop there. So we're 2,000 um, kilos behind. Can we ship 2,000 kilos in a month? I don't think so, but I'm seeing quite a lot of product here. So we may be able to expand out this road and have another, at least one more road running along on this side. Hmm. That would be quite nice, I will confess. Though if we were to do that, it would probably move the loading bays into the middle here, rather than the sides. And then uh, just allow the roads to be a little bit offset. We've definitely got enough money to place it down, but we're already at uh, a quarter of the way there, and we haven't gone through quarter of the month yet. Ooh, this looks like we might be able to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay down a cut here. And I'll bring you back once this month is over, to see whether we've managed to hit the 6,000 mark or not. There we go. We should be able to crash the 6,000 with a quarter of a month to spare. 6,000. Exactly. That is marvellous. And it just goes to show that although I was really struggling with the taxes, you can come back from it, but you do need to uh, have options available to increase the speed by which you're, uh, you're exporting. If not, uh, not, if you've got a backlog, then it's just speed. Or if you're, if you're bottlenecked by your production, then that might be a bit of a tricky one because it does cost quite a lot to add more production to the factory. But nevertheless, we managed to pull back from the brink and I'm actually really, really happy with that. Now, the uh, limiting factor here is going to be research. We need an awful lot to unlock the combiner. So we're probably not going to be doing that in this episode. Instead, I think we're going to uh, focus on just setting up the iron over here and bringing that down. We can just have that uh, offloading very simply until we're ready to set up our steel production. So the last things we're going to be doing in this episode then is just setting up a little loop into a factory that will then produce a uh, refined iron for us. Now, how do I want to go about this? I could have this something like that. That way, this 
it doesn't need to be a uh, a strict loop. Instead, we can go down like this, turn that corner, fantastic, and come straight back up, and then enter a factory from here. We're not hooking this up to power just yet, so there's no need to uh, to rush here. Will that line up? Ah, that's a bit of a shame. Oh, well, it's uh, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we want five by six if we can get it. There we go. Womp, there we are. And that should be everything we really need. Now, is that a little bit too close? Uh, no, exactly right. Marvellous. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to keep you along for the ride of setting up this uh, particular factory here. Shouldn't take me over long. There we are. Now, the other factory, uh, the one that is yet to be updated to uh, current specifications, I will be doing that one off camera rather than uh, expecting you to sit here with me while I do it. But uh, I will try to keep this series, for the most part, uh, limited to what I'm doing on camera, simply because there, there is quite a lot of uh, nuance to it. And uh, I do still see quite a lot of people saying that they're having troubles getting to grips with uh, the mechanics, especially with the taxes. Again, you can just restart at this point if that is impacting your fun. There is no point in playing a game if you're not enjoying it. In my humble, uh, humblest of humble opinions, which again is really not that humble. Uh, right, let me pop this down over here. Can I squeeze that in at all? Not easily, but... All I need for it is for it to be before the uh, empty and crate make maker, ultimately. Um, I could pop that one there, though. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. We'll have two of these side by side. That way it gives me plenty of room to uh, have our loading wagon collect without too much issue. There we go. Have you deposit there and there. Then we just need a step conveyor. And then that comes right along there. Uh, we want a claw track there. Uh, well, not a claw track, a claw tra uh, transfer claw. I'm going to keep getting those confused, and I do apologize. Uh, right, we want about five is what I've been using, and that seems to give me enough room. We don't need it. We realistically, we'd only need four, but uh, five seems fine to me for now. Uh, there we go. So one, two, three, and indeed four. I'm getting quite a lot more uh, comfortable with setting up these little refining areas. And again, I'm keeping the refineries to the point I'm, I'm building for the future. Once these are hooked up to, to water, I won't need to do any more work, and I will still have this uh, working quite nicely for us. And then we want a loading station just down about here. Uh, again, if you've got the room, you may as well use it to add uh, five loading bays there just to, to avoid any uh, particular issue with the uh, claw tracks being unable to load, uh, offload the last crate. For example, if you only had this, then although these run constantly, they are suddenly um, limited to the speed that a step conveyor works at. Uh, I honestly would prefer it if the step conveyors worked a little bit faster, but I guess that is part of the point, is uh, trying to work around that particular uh, problem there. Uh, let's bring that down so far, then get a little corner in there, and there we go. Perfect. That should do everything I want. Now I need to uh, offload the items there, and generally speaking, two is enough. If you use the rest, you can. It's not really going to uh, cause any significant issue for you. The only thing is you're going to have to have a little bit more capital. Uh, that's, that's realistically the only only uh, limiting factor there. Now we want... Uh, we'll pop on five claws just for the sake of it. They are going in the right direction, which is marvellous. So I don't need to change that around. There we go. Setting these up so that they will try, try to load evenly they probably won't there we go that is also moving in the right direction perfect and i would want three mine carts there there we are and with that we can go ahead and connect up the power to this system there we go and uh there we are we want one coming over here one of the nice things about the way that the uh, power lines connect is you can just run them uh once you've kind of set a direction as long as you just keep clicking, it'll connect them all together. I was honestly prepared for that to power down, but we've got a bit of room to spare. 
In fact, that's actually quite nice. Uh, ah, of course, we are not actually passing the power through the factory. I did make a point of mentioning that before, so it's really uh, my own silliness for not picking up on that. It did connect there, interestingly, because I guess the corner acts as a power pole. Yes, it does. So that, that did pass it along. That last power pole is, is kind of uh, surplus to demand, but it's not a biggie. We're fine with leaving that one there, I think. Right, we want to uh, step up onto a highway and step down somewhere around here, I would imagine, just so that we can offload some of this uh, refined iron. In fact, let's uh, let's do that a little bit further back. We're not going to be doing anything fancy with this, such as uh, research or, or anything along those lines, so we don't need to worry over much about it. Um, if we rotate around, then it'll give me a little bit more room to load onto a container. We've got so much money now. Ah, money worries seem like a thing of the distant, distant past. But they certainly weren't. Uh, there we go. And we want to load from here. There we are. And then load into... Oops, that was in the, slightly the wrong place. Two crate makers. Don't realistically need two of them, I don't think. But uh, may as well. There we go. These will need a wee touch of power. There we go. And with that, we can just offload... Well, honestly... Hmm. We could have our claw tracks work on both sides in a way, but I don't really think it's it's strictly necessary. Um, this would be sufficient, though it's going to cost an inordinate amount of money to run this in both directions. So we'll we'll just stick with one um, conveyor in each direction for now. That is really not going to nearly be enough, but it'll have to do for now. There we go. And we can set these out with the claw tracks as well. This is really quite, quite surplus to requirements, but uh, we'll leave it there just for the sake of it anyway. There we go. I may want to set those up with uh, skips, but for the time being we'll just go without and see how we do. There we go. And we want the same thing over there. There we are. And here as well. And finally, we want the claw track which will be responsible for offloading. There we go. Oops. Uh, one thing I've noticed is it's a little bit finicky when it comes to corners that exit onto a location that already has a uh, separate claw track. It isn't so bad when it's turning towards itself, but there, because I, I'm not allowed to link both of these claw tracks, I wasn't even able to make the corner work. For some reason, I don't really quite understand why that goes on. I just realised that my beard is banging into the pot filter. Well, how uh, how rude. Right, there we go. And we can set this up. We'll set it up for six. It's probably more than we need, really. And uh, finally, we want to set up a cart to start uh, hauling things around on this side. Oh! Oh dear, what's happening there? Oh! <laughs> I knew it was going to happen eventually. Oh, well. It's fine. There we go. That should uh, start working. <laughs> ah, marvellous. There we are. So this... I, I, Yeah, I completely did it the wrong way around. I probably built, set it up in much the same way I set that one up. Yeah, in fact, I absolutely got this the wrong way around. Uh, my bad, everyone. Though it doesn't really matter between two containers. So that's... Uh, that's not a biggie there. There we are. Let's see all of this start offloading. There we go. And that should help out a little bit, just to allow us to shift that little bit more. Though we've managed to shift up to 7.26. That's really not too bad. Um, in terms of what that would give us access to, we're a bit shy there. Well, we're quite shy of everything else. Well, we're not <laughs> far away from the freight train. Now that will be a very interesting one if we can get that one up in the next episode, though I wouldn't hold my breath on that one, personally. 
There we go. We're up to 155,000 research points. We need about three times that much. Well, a little bit more than that. But uh, we should be able to hit that milestone in the next episode and unlock the ability to actually fabricate steel. And that will be a gigantic boost to our income. Currently, our taxes stand at 190,000, and our power is just slowly creeping up. Honestly, by the time that you're out of early game, power is an inconsequential uh, expense. You, you really don't need to, to worry about it on any level whatsoever. Now, uh, generally speaking, this one isn't having to pick up any crates, so this is just stockpiling all the way back here, but this one will start making use of the ability to collect a couple of crates, and having them load from both sides just means it's going to be a little bit better balanced. Uh, overall, though, I'm really happy with what we've managed to do in today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed and are looking forward to the next, but until then, and as always, do take care, everyone.